Hello and welcome to Gecko Online. In this lesson, we'll find out the secret lives of our clothes. Imagine you're out shopping. You find some jeans you like, so you flip over the tag to check the price. But they've covered it up, so you can't see it. You wouldn't buy something without knowing the price, so chances are you'd end up putting those jeans back on the rack. In fact, there is a price tag that's being hidden from us every day. Not the one that tells us how much money to pay, but the one that adds up the hidden costs, like sweatshop labor, industrial pollution, and toxic chemicals and products. And just like the regular price tag, the hidden prices can be very different, even between products that look and cost the same. So let's go price shopping to find out the whole story. We'll compare two brands of jeans that cost the same amount of money and see whether hidden price tags are so different. But, spoiler alert, the hidden price tag is already available for us to check. We'll see the new web tools we can check just as easily as we flip over the regular price tag. When we start buying based on the hidden price tag, we push brands to lower that price too. Every time we put down money for a product, it's like casting a vote. We pick the winners. So let's see how we can vote for fair labor, a healthy environment, and safer products every time we shop. To see the differences between these two brands of jeans, we need to look into their life cycles, the lives that these products led before they got to the store, from raw materials, to processing, to assembly, to distribution. Let's start with raw materials. Both jeans are made of cotton, and that means using pesticides. One-sixth of all the pesticides in the world are sprayed on cotton, but half of it runs off, contaminating the soil and water. And since 90% of cotton farmers live in developing countries, using the cheapest, most toxic pesticides, the impacts on farmers' health are more than we'll ever know. And cotton is a thirsty plant. It can take 6,800 liters, about 20 bathtubs of water, to grow the cotton for one pair of jeans. The Aral Sea evaporated into desert mainly because it was sucked dry by cotton farms in Uzbekistan. One of these two brands of jeans just uses whatever cotton they can get their hands on without dealing with the impacts on workers and environments along the way. The other is a member of the Better Cotton Initiative, which trains farmers on safely using less pesticides and water. In water-starved Pakistan, the fourth largest cotton grower, many of these farmers have cut their water and pesticide use to a quarter of what they used to be, and that's added two-thirds to their revenues. Of course, organic cotton is best because it's grown without using toxic pesticides. But right now, only 1% of the world's cotton is organic. But through the Better Cotton Initiative, one of these two brands is massively reducing its raw material impacts today. Next, the cotton gets spun into yarn, dyed, and woven into fabric. Chances are it's happening in Xintang in South China, where most of China's denim production happens, and 40% of the genes sold in the U.S. come from. If you look at satellite photos of Xintang on Google Earth, you can see where the river turns blue-black from the dyeing factories along the river. And you know the pollution has got to be bad if you can see it from orbit. In 2010, Greenpeace tested the river and found it loaded with heavy metals from the dyes, cadmium, chromium, and lead. These heavy metals are toxic to our nervous systems. They disrupt our hormone systems and cause cancer. One brand never checks up on their suppliers, so you can almost count on them doing the cheapest thing dumping it in the river. The other brand monitors their suppliers' factories to make sure they recycle their dyes and use wastewater treatment plants so they don't pollute the river. But they go further than that. Why put all those toxic chemicals into the product in the first place? Product safety laws only regulate a tiny fraction of the thousands of toxic chemicals that make their way into our products. Rather than just wait for slow government regulation, this brand works with an organization called Chemsec. They use Chemsec's sin list to build their own growing list of chemicals that they keep out of their products, and they make this list public for all to see. After being dyed, the fabric goes to assembly factories to be cut and sewn into jeans. We hear about sweatshops in the developing world, but what's it like to work in one? The documentary China Blue captures it well. It follows the life of a 16-year-old migrant worker in a jeans factory in South China. We see her working 20-hour overtime shifts because orders are behind schedule. Her pay is months late, and she won't be able to use the three days that she gets off for New Year to visit her family because she can't afford the train fare. If she falls asleep on the job, she'll be fined two days' wages, so during the longest shifts, she sometimes uses clothes pegs to hold her eyes open. This kind of story is all too common. To provide for their families, 
migrant workers leave them behind and go to work in distant factories. But wages are so low, they can't even cover their own living costs, much less send money home. So they accept 70 hours a week of mind-numbing factory work just to scrape together enough to get by. It's not hard to see why one in five migrant factory workers in Shenzhen is clinically depressed. How does one of these brands let this happen? The truth is, they don't even know who their suppliers are because they just ordered their jeans through some sourcing company. So they've never visited the factories, and no third-party inspectors ever visit those factories either. This is the perfect recipe for sweatshop conditions. The other brand is a member of the Fair Labor Association and uses their supplier code of conduct. That means they have regular third-party inspections and they work closely with their suppliers, training them on how to be profitable with shorter work weeks and salaries that cover workers' basic needs. When issues come up, they work with the FLA to resolve them and report the results to the public. And that brings us back to the store, where we're still looking at the price tag, trying to decide which pair of jeans to buy. If we only look at the regular price tag, we push brands to go for the lowest cost of manufacturing, and that rewards rock-bottom wages, long hours, toxic materials, and dangerous pollutants in soil, rivers, and workers' bodies. But the hidden price tag can't be kept secret any longer. The truth is out there. We even have a fancy word for it, transparency. The gist of transparency is, no news is bad news. If a brand is a member of the Better Cotton Initiative and the Fair Labor Association, we can find out. If they're publishing lists of toxic chemicals they avoid, we can find out. If they're not saying precisely what they're doing at each stage along the life cycle, we can assume the worst. Of course, none of us wants to spend hours trying to figure out which of these two brands is stuck in the past and which is leading the way, like the marchers we talked about in the journey of sustainable business. We just want to know which one has the lowest hidden price tag. We won't find it on the label yet, but now we can check it just as easily. An organization called Good Guide digs through all the information that transparency brings out and turns it into a simple rating from 1 to 10. By using their website or smartphone app, we can tell at a glance how a brand measures up on environmental and social impacts. If you want to dig further, it shows how the brand rates at all levels, including restricted substances lists, living wage policy, and transparency. With Good Guide, we can easily check which of these two brands has the lower hidden price tag. They already cover 100 major brands of jeans and over 140,000 products, from clothes to cosmetics to electronics. With this tool, and likely even more comprehensive ones to come, the hidden price tag is no longer secret. When we try on a pair of jeans and look at ourselves in the mirror, we think, is this me? Whether they're hip huggers or mom jeans, at some level, we know that our style reflects what kind of person we are. It shows what matters to us and how we see ourselves. We would like to see ourselves as people who care about things beyond ourselves. When we know the hidden price tag, we can express that by casting our vote at the checkout counter. No to overuse of pesticides and toxic chemicals. Yes to fair wages in a healthy environment. Social media amplifies our voice as consumers, not only to vote with our wallets, but to influence our social circles to do the same. It shifts the balance of power. Because we as consumers outnumber all the brands and organizations, there's a few billion of us now buying products every day. The time has finally come when we can make a positive impact with every purchase that we make towards a fairer, healthier, and more sustainable planet.